Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv and today what I want to do is just talk about the animation effect that I used on my Twitter spitter from a few tutorials ago um, and I had a YouTube user ask me hey how did you do that animation and I figured you know what why don't I just do a very quick tutorial and provide source files so that if anybody wants to do this cool little random 3D animated uh, cluster bomb effect as I call it uh, you can do it all right, so I'm not going to go into detail with how it works so much as just talk about the code and get you the source files. Uh, but we are going to be talking about a very important aspect of when you do tweens in 3D using the uh, rotation X, rotation Y um, properties, um, your images will get a little bit blurry. So we're going to show you how to de-blur those. So that's probably the most important learning you'll get out of this. All right, so I'm going to go to my start file. And all we have in here um, in my libraries, we have the symbol called box. And I just want to, and it's also set to export with a linkage of box. And that symbol contains a stroke. It's a hairline stroke. And then we also have that glare, which gives us uh, that just sort of semi-transparent white shape there. And we have this solid background. And what I'm going to be doing is randomly changing the solid background of this clip. And the that is called solid underscore MC. All right, so in scene one, there's nothing really on my stage except for this play again button. Since I'm using timeline max, I can rewind this animation and replay it as many times as I like. Um, so what I'm really literally doing in the code is taking a box out of the library. I'm changing the color of its solid shape there. I'm placing it somewhere on the stage and I'm flipping it around and animating it to random X and Y coordinates. And I'm going to be doing this in a loop um, with many boxes, I'm going to be offsetting them in different places. All right, and every time I animate it, I'm going to be adding that animation to a timeline max so that it can be rewound and played again. So in code, that's going to look something like this. Um, we're importing the green sock classes. I'm keeping track of a num boxes variable, which just tells me how many boxes I'm going to be using and I'm setting up a timeline max and I'm starting it paused and I have an on reverse complete callback in here which says play again because what my button's going to do is rewind the animation and when it's done rewinding or reversing it's going to call a function called play again which will play it forwards all right but the meat of the code here is inside of this for loop okay and so I'm going to need to create 140 boxes so I'm going to create a new box which basically looks in the library with for a symbol with a linkage or a class of box and I'm going to be setting the X value of that new box I'm going to be increasing it um, from left to right if we look in my finished file over here and test you'll just see that as these boxes come on screen there's definitely this left to right motion from where the X's start Okay, so they're not just always coming from the same spot. That whole cluster is moving from left to right. And so that's how we handle it uh, with this little equation here. <clears throat> All right, and then the next thing we do is we start each box with an alpha of zero. And before we insert any tweens into our timeline, we're going to be tweening the solid background to a random color. So we're just using the tint plugin uh, with tween max. And then I'm telling my timeline to insert a new tween max that I'll tell the box to randomly tween to a random X position, a Y position of 200. Actually, that's going to be random. And we're just going to do the height of the stage, which is like somewhere around 400. All right. And the rotation Y, we're doing that 360 degree flip. And every time we insert a tween, here, this last parameter is the actual time that we're inserting in the timeline. So the value of i is always increasing, and if we multiply that value by 0.01, we're just going to get very small incremental time changes. So if we uh, tween this, you'll see here also, here's what we get. All right, A bunch of those block boxes being put on stage, starting at an x that's progressively changing left to right, and then they're randomly tweening to X and Y positions. All right, and since it's in a timeline, I can reverse that timeline and play it again. Now, what I want to point out here is that if you look closely, these boxes, they all seem a little bit blurry around the edges. Now, there is a slight drop shadow on there, 
But note when I zoom in a bit here, you see how when I'm zooming in, we get this sort of pixelated nonsense here? These are all clean vector shapes. So I shouldn't be seeing these blurred pixels here around the corners or around the left edge here. All right, we don't want to see that blurring at all. So what happens is whenever I do a rotation around the y-axis here in 3D, um, Flash uh, treats that asset as a bitmap. So even though it started as a vector, while it's spinning, it gets turned into a bitmap temporarily. And so there's a little trick we're going to use that says after we're done doing this animation, we're going to make all these vectors crisp again. So let's look at my finished file right here and test. And you'll see in comparison, when I zoom in here, that everything is razor sharp around these corners here, okay? As I drag around, yeah, you see the drop shadow, but we have nice, smooth, rounded corners. Uh, but in my version, we had that bitmap stuff going on. Uh, and so what we do in the finished file, you know what, I'll just talk through it because it's right here, is that when we randomly uh, place and spin everything, we're gonna have an uncomplete callback that it's going to refer to a deblur function, and that deblur function is going to be sent a parameter, which is going to be the current box that we are now tweening. Okay, and this deblur function does this. Um, what it does is it removes the matrix 3D transform that is on this box, and that always happens whenever you do one of these 3D spins. So we need to tell Flash what the current x and y value are of the box, then we remove its matrix 3D transform, and then we reset the x and y position, because when we remove the, the uh, transform matrix here, uh, we would lose the positioning of that box. So let me just comment out these two lines just to show you why that's important. Okay, so what would happen now is you'd get the animation, but you'll notice that everything then gets reset up to an x, y of zero, zero. So, You'll see that once the animation plays, everything's jumping to the top left-hand corner. So that's why we record the X and Y position, and then we use them to reset the boxes X and Y when the animation is done. The only drawback to this, you'll see here when the animation is done, if you look very closely, there's just a slight shift going on in all the all the movie clips. They actually appear to be moving like one pixel over. What's happening is when they get cleared up, it happens instantly, so it looks like there's just a slight jump. But since there's so much moving around on the screen when it happens, not too many people are going to notice it. Alright, so again, all we really have here is a very basic for loop that's taking some symbols out of the library, placing them on the stage, and adding some animations into a timeline. And then later on, you know, I have my button set up that if you click it, what's going to happen is we're going to speed up the time scale of the timeline, and then we're going to tell it to reverse. When I roll over the button, we just change the tint. When I roll out, we remove whatever tint change we did. Um, and then when we click, once we reverse the timeline, remember we have our on reverse complete calls my play again function, and then play again works. So again, I know this isn't the most detailed tutorial I've ever done. I really just want to share these files with you um, and just talk through it basically. So hopefully uh, you'll download these source files, you play with it, and really, you know, tweak some of these values and see what happens. All right, folks, I'll be launching a new tour, <laughs> a new tutorial soon.